What's up guys? Rona Man here. We're just in the Hollywood Hills. Last day on this trip. And a nice view down there. We're going to go up to the top here. And uh, today, we're a couple friends here. We're just like, uh, we've all been fucking around having a great time. Yeah, man, like, it's been awesome. Yeah, and just like, what, what do you guys think? Like, I mean, I don't know about you, but like, if you're not, if a guy's not married, right? And a guy's single, and I think the number one thing he needs is cool friends that are doing cool shit, you know, around him. Yeah, absolutely. Like, fuck, there's nothing, yeah. there's nothing more important. No, I completely agree. I mean, I don't know if you've heard the uh, the expression. Okay, this one. You're uh, you're the top. You're you're a combination of the top five people that you spend the most time with, and I think that's that's a huge influence on on what you do in your day-to-day -day life. And so, when you're actually surrounded by really cool guys who are doing really cool things, you're naturally also going to become that really cool guy that people want to surround themselves with. What's what's uh, you know? I, I'm sure some people were listening, going like. Like fucking cool guy, easy to say, right? Right. But like, I, I'm very, very picky about who I hang out with. Mm -hmm. Like, I have a strict idea in my mind of what is a guy that's really worth spending a lot of time with, you know? Mm -hmm. Or what type of guys, what type of you know, social circles and groups, mm -hmm. right? What do you guys think is like key things, like characteristics of people that are like, you know, good friends? Yeah, you know, I, I think a big, a important thing to do is like find communities. So like. There's different like groups that you can find on the internet that you can go sort of meet and hang out with. And then you have the opportunity to like pick from a select few guys that are interested in, you know, something that is also an interest of yours, right? So, I mean, like hanging out with you, I'm like, I like people that are adventurous, take risks, are free, able to just like express themselves and are basically like genuine and authentic. I think those are like some things that I'm always sort of uh, looking for when I'm kind of hanging out with people like is this person a real person you know right you know and I think too like things like like you you guys are all into like everyone's editing videos everybody's like into production content creation you know like fucking cutting-edge stuff really what you guys are doing you know yeah I think that's important too because like a guy can be a cool guy but if he's out of touch or he, he's not doing cool things like I don't know. It's just like so much. You, you don't have that much in common. You know what yeah. I mean? And, uh, yeah, and if they're not happy, then you 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 already know that that's gonna bleed onto you, right? Like unhappy, bitter people. If they're not doing something creative or something that that really affects you, right? Like if their job sucks. I mean, if you if your job sucks and you're spending ten hours a day there, you know, driving back and forth and like your whole that's that, how can you be interesting? Like like it's yeah. really difficult. Right? Well, just the fact that you've like accepted that your job sucks. And you're not doing anything about it, you know. You can have a shitty job, but be doing something about it. Then there's, I feel like that's a huge difference. Oh, I see. Like if you have proactive. no choice or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right. Proactive. Yeah, because like if you have no fucking choice, right? If you got no legs, or you're blind and you work in a massage place, and that's all you can do, you know, then then, then I don't think it's the same thing, you know, because you're doing the best you can do, right? Yeah. I think that's important too, like. But it's more the attitude around it. I mean, that that's that's how I surround myself with like specific people like that. Like I don't I don't need to surround myself with people who are making like tens of millions of dollars and are super successful. I mean, if they're in areas that I'm passionate about, then great. They they, they can they can teach me things that are going to help me um, you know, reach a certain level that I want to reach in that specific right. field. But like, as far as attitudes go, like you can meet people who make you to do something. And that's what I think collectively, um, like us here, uh, up here, uh, all have in common is like, we just all have that fucking drive. Um, we might have different passions, but the, the fact that we all have like this positive attitude when we're going out, when we're having fun together, it's, uh, it's, it's like really what drives us to, um, to push each other to do better in whatever we're doing. Right. I, I think for me, I, I go through different phases. Like, you know, I remember when I was like early 20s, like like traveling was the big thing. Mm -hmm. And people who traveled were really good to hang out with. Because I, I traveled the world and I wanted to see everything right. And then later I wanted to hang out with guys who were like into hardcore sales because I wanted to be a top salesman. Like I wanted to kick ass. I was, you know, like literally, like I wanted to almost kill people on the phone. Like I was so intense. Like I wanted to be number fucking one. I wanted to sell it. ice to Eskimos, literally, you know what I mean? And so I found friends that were the same way, you know, at that time. And then I learned to be a top salesman, you know? 
But if I wasn't around these other guys, if I did like a half-assed call or they said, what are you doing? And they say, oh, I'm doing, you know, oh, I'm sending emails. They'd be like, emails? Fucking, you know, this is, like, but actually this is before email. It'd be faxes, you know, they'd be like, faxes. Like, get on the goddamn phone, man. What's wrong with you, you know? I'd be like, oh, right. Yeah, okay, the phone. Yeah, pick up the phone, you know, and I'd start calling, right? I'd start cold calling because they, they inspired me to do it. It yeah. wasn't like drill sergeants. It's just like kind of fun, right? It's like a fun yeah. motivation. I like friends doing that to me. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, we'll otherwise, each other a lot. Things. Yeah, we we tease each other a lot when we're kind of like being a little bitch and doesn't want, don't want to go out or don't want to <laughs> do the things that like go to the gym or something. Yeah, like yeah. we tease each other on it, but it's like it's like in a playful, positive way where you you get shit and you realize like yeah, I am being a little bitch for not doing it. Yeah, and to like yeah. add to that, I think that also surrounding yourself with the people who are doing the best at it, it's gonna push your standards higher, right? So oh fuck yeah! If oh, everyone, absolutely. I might absolutely. be the best in my community, but then when I go and I and I hang out with like the big dogs, so to speak, yeah. Yeah, and yeah, I yeah. might be the worst. I'm still going to improve myself because I'm trying to reach their standards. Um, so that, that's huge. Yeah, yeah. Both. Oh, those two things both ring true with me. Like last night, we were. It was maybe the day before. Somebody that was older, right? I'm older, right? And there was another guy who was older, and he said something like, "He, he is older, so he does these things or whatever." And I, I, I wanted to say, I didn't say it. But I should have said, because I'm older than everybody, right? In the group, and I was gonna say, "Hey, that's bullshit." <laughs> you know what I mean? Age don't mean shit. You take care of your body, you can't take care of your mind. Like, like that's that's the other thing. I can help other guys like that. It's like, dude, you're relying on the old thing. Are you fucking out of your mind? Like I can fucking bend, I can bench heavy, like heavy. I can squat 400 pounds. Like I can do like you know maybe 10 sets of 10. You know, 400 pounds, right? Fucking a squats too, right? And old, someone's gonna make a fucking excuse about being old to me. Fuck you. Yeah. Right. No right. way. I won't take that. But the thing is, if you if you if you don't have friends around you, think that way. Most people think that they're like, oh, I'm in my 50s, I can't do that. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, oh, you know, I'm too young, I can't fucking do this. You know, it's like. This is bull you're gonna have different bullshit along your lives, you know. That old thing just pisses me off. I'm just like, what are you fucking talking about? Right. You know? It's yeah, like, it's good to have the diversity too in the group, right? Where you where people come from different backgrounds and they've so they've like pushed different I guess pushed through different barriers, right? And it allows you to see like, wow, I'm uh I this guy's doing all this. I could I could push myself to go do something a little bit deeper, something a little bit harder. So being in that group surrounding yourself with those type of people like it's so important for, for your own like uh you know for your own boundaries and uh pushing through those there's a fucking lizard there there's all these oh, cool shit. there's there's all these cool animals this, isn't this insane we're in hollywood hills and there's a goddamn dirt road <laughs> this is insane man probably the only dirt road in the hollywood hills <laughs> yeah i love this shit man this is like old school man like old school southern california here like probably see a snake or something yeah yeah no i totally like you there's no way one guy can figure life out man mm -hmm. there's just no that's why we read books right yeah but but you need real people like i, I think mentors are over really overrated i think having cool guys around you is like more important yeah you like because a mentor you just call once a week and you can bullshit the guy right it's easy it's easy to lie yeah. Whereas if you guy living with you and the guy's like, you fucking got up at 10 o'clock every day, what are you doing? And then you're like, ah, oh, fuck, I wanted to cover that up, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I actually think like it's really important like to get roommates at a young age so that I you, agree. yeah, like, and but not only that, but like screen those roommates, like see who they are, get to know what their interests are, what are they doing? Because I have roommates where like they're potheads and like nothing wrong with pot, I like smoking pot, but. Yeah. They were just kind of like just too chill and like just wanted to play, stay home, play video games. And I found I, I felt that like kind of fall into me. Like I started falling into those habits. But then when I was like, I want roommates that are like, like just hustling on life, want to get better. When I had those roommates, I noticed that also, um, like focus on me. Like, like killer views. Yeah. Right but here, but it is important I think to know that. Right here. Yeah. yeah so oh yeah. Like, um. I think it's important to note, though, that like when you are younger, yeah, I mean, you should be spending time with everyone because you don't know 
necessarily who you want to be around and who you don't. Like you have to be around those people to realize this is not the lifestyle that I want. So, so in a way, Dude, that that's was, true. That was good for you, yeah. right? Like now you know, okay, yeah, exactly. this is what that's I actively don't look for, um, and that that can be just as powerful as looking for what you do want is knowing what you don't want. You know, it's funny because, you know, when you say that, it's so true. You know why? The trick is this. There's always something little trick. Like, everybody knows that, theoretically, right? But the trick is like this. Like, you're not against weed, right? You know, you smoke weed, right? Yeah. But people that smoke too much weed aren't the right roommates for you. And most people that are trying to do stuff, right? You just don't get anything done. Yeah. So it's, like, hard because part of you wants to be fair, right? You're like, oh, it's cool. Mm -hmm. You know, this is cool. He does this. I do it, too. But it's like there's something missing there's something wrong like you might do it say nine o'clock at night on a party night right these guys do it in the morning mm -hmm. now i think smoking right. weed the time it's the time you smoke the weed mm -hmm. in the day is the big difference for me i figured out over the years anybody smokes weed in the morning they're fucked well there's some guys that are like really productive on weed which is kind of crazy to me yeah but i don't want to be around it yeah yeah, yeah exactly, it's, it's, it's not it's me not you, yeah, yeah there's no way there's no exactly. way i could be like that right so like but but i i think if a guy if it, if someone drinks at night or you know smoke weed at night i don't think that's a big deal really like that's not like a deal killer but somebody does it in the morning man for me like or if they take a lot of anti-medication like bullshit oh, in the yeah. morning yeah. where they're kind of a zombie you know yeah it's like fuck i don't want that but see, that's an advantage of you also being older is, is again, going back to, like, you know that's not what you want in your life. Like, obviously, you've experienced this oh, yeah. before to, oh, yeah. to be to the point where you're like, no, I, I, I do not want Oh, dude, this. dude, I ended up uh, in Narcotics Anonymous at 21, oh, you wow. know, like, doing wow. meth and coke and stuff, you know. And I got off all that stuff when I was 21, which is, like, 31 years ago. And that, that saved me. It's almost like a you know? blessing that you got like involved in it so young right yeah then you yeah. were like this is not the direction i need to go but the, in. the thing yeah. is that's the way i am i spotted it you know like a lot of yeah. guys would just continue yeah you know exactly. what I mean? they just continue that's i mean true. I, I wasn't stealing stuff you know i was earning my own i was a salesman i was making tons of money i was only spending my own money you know i wasn't you know damn yeah i wasn't out on the street you know just so sucking it's dick for five dollars a problem yeah. yeah no one else was out there to tell me like my friends were like you're fine you know but I was like, no, I'm not fine. You know, I'm not fine. I could see the future, right? The future oh, was shit. dark. Shit. You know. Wow. You fuck your heart up. You know, you fuck everything up, right? You don't sleep. Sleep is what kills meth, guys. More than anything. You know, because then you're really fucked. Like, sleep is so important. Oh, that's another thing. People that don't sleep. You know, I don't want a roommate that doesn't sleep. I've had girls spend the night and they don't sleep. Dude, that's harsh. You know, they're moving around all night, you know, oh, yeah. like making tea and stuff and They're I usually that, maybe that affects like how they interact with people throughout the day, right? Like oh, they're just like oh, kind of stressed. They're, they're very nervous. Through. Yeah, they're anxious. Yeah. Yeah, they, they tend to worry about things more um, They tend to be the type that email too often, you know, or text too often, you know Yeah, looks like this might be a closed room oh, here. Wow, closed door here. This is great though, man. Holy crap. I was just thinking anything else that they don't. I, I'd say one thing. Do you guys know Dimitri down in San Diego? Do you know him? I don't, I don't know. I don't want to say his last name, but either way, he's a cool guy. He's a friend of ours, you know, basically our group. And he like um, I went to his party, right? And 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 when he at the party, he did a, a rap. He wrote like his own rap. And you know, he's this like skinny white guy and he like writes his rap and he gets out there and he he does it and he's like totally sincere and he's like it's, it's, owns it. it's about it's about improving himself it's like positive self-help rap basically right and he, <laughs> and, and he gets out there and he's like spitting this rap out and i was like man i never even thought about something that positive when i was you know what i mean like like yeah. that, that's positive right like everybody's like ready to laugh you know because we think he's joking right <laughs> and then he's like starts talking and then we're like oh my god he's serious you know and then he keeps going and we're like, oh, this is pretty good, you know. I never heard like positive rap like this, you know. Yeah. And it like ended up being really cool. And like, uh, you know, he worked out, he, now he's been doing that for a few years, you know. And like, it's, it's, it's just a, for me, like, I would have never thought of that. Like, I, I was way too negative when I was young. Like, I, that, that, that was something like that. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, I would have never thought of that. I'll be afraid I of getting laughed now. At. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, I'll, I'll tell you to turn on, turn you on to his stuff. Yeah, yeah, I know it's very positive and, and cool. But I think the main thing is he took a risk, right? Yeah. You know, like a major, major risk. Um, I think maybe something else that could be useful. Uh, 
is like learning how to cut off people who are bad in your life right um because that's not the easiest thing i mean i've i've definitely had people in my life who have talked about friends that are are bringing them down they just they're not working out well together anymore yeah um and i, I think friendships can often they, they, they're a lot like you, know, you guys grow in the same direction at one point in your life like they were very useful you guys got along you were on the same path right but then you grow apart i mean you right you see this often like especially when you're younger right you get out of high school and you go to college and you get out of right. college and, and you're gonna have different friends throughout that time because you just naturally grow apart um but but some people will like try to hang on to to friends um and that could be coming from a place of maybe they don't even have many other friends so it's like very important or, or, or fear or, or guilt or whatever yes yeah, yeah. Uh, exactly like point, they feel yeah. bad for letting their friend go or whatever but if they're if they're not helping you if it gets to a point where you can you can see that they're impeding on on your improvement in life yeah um you know, it, it's just you need to cut them out it's, right it's just gonna bring you down yeah i 100 percent resonate with that when i was in high school i had uh kind of friends that kind of like bullied me i was kind of like the butt of the joke all the time and it really affected my self-esteem oh big time yeah and that, I, and that's I, no I, joke I right there. That, i realized that like you know after a while and i was able to like you know what i, I have to, i know i have to cut this person out of my life and when i did like i actually noticed a change and I oh. felt, and, I, and not only that, but I felt like I had to go back, like what you're saying, like I felt a little guilty, but really it's just uh, like insecurities, right? Well, well, you know, the thing is, if you, uh, it's a little bit like um, if you discipline a woman, right, instead of letting her run roughshod, right? We were your friends too, like I think that it's not just getting rid of them, but it's also like, you know, just saying, hey, no more of this. Like, yeah, I'm not right. into this anymore. Yeah, like, exactly. You give them a chance. Like, it's like, up it's like, it's like, hey, you know, uh, I noticed I'm always about a joke, this and that. That's fine and everything, yes. you know, and that's been great. But I realize now that it's not what I want right now. Mm -hmm. Like, I really don't want this ever again. Mm -hmm. And then uh, if they can't adjust, then that's their thing, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. you give them a chance. You let them know. I, I also... You, you verbalize it. You know, I'll tell you a story, like, a real quick story. Mm -hmm. This is a fucking great story. There's these two guys, right? And both of them... We're like uh, in in uh, NA, right? And the one guy, they're both badass criminals, like hardcore fucking big time criminals, right? Probably murder charges and things like that, right? So Shit. the one guy, he he, what he would do before he before he you know cut someone was he would buy a knife and he write the guy's name on it and put it in his boot, right? So he, he went to the meeting and uh, he the other guy, the guy would call him this nickname that he didn't like, and so he bought a knife and he wrote the guy's name on it and had it in his boot. So then he's sitting in the meeting and he go and the guy comes up to him and says that name and then he's just about to pull it out and he's like wait maybe i shouldn't do this now that i'm maybe i should think about this for a second so he calls his sponsor like basically the guy who helps him out and he goes to the guy and he goes hey uh you know i'm, I'm gonna kill this guy and he said oh what did he do he says well he called me that nickname and he said do you like that nickname and he said no and he said okay well why don't you go and tell him you don't like that nickname and so he went back over there and he goes, I don't like that nickname. And the guy's like, oh, okay, sorry. And that was it, and they're good friends, right? <laughs> like, it could go, it, it could have gone to murder instead of just simply communicating that you don't like something. And like, it's like also responsibility of you, you know, or me, to say things that I don't like and to verbalize them because yeah. often other people are fine with it. Like, that might've been the way they grew up. You know, they just, that's the way, you know. Yeah, that's a good point. They don't even know that they're bothering you Match. Right, yeah, right, right, right. Fun, yeah. Right, they're not doing. They're not trying to like torture you or something, right? You know, it's yeah. So that's that's the other thing. Give give your friends a chance. Like give them one chance. Figure it out. Figure it out what it is that you don't like about it. And I do the same thing if I ever have any girls or whatever. It's always like, hey, this is the new rule. Like I I don't. Well, you used to like it. Doesn't matter. I don't like it anymore. This I don't want anymore. And then people kind of test you, right? They're like, are you really serious about this? Yeah. Once they realize you're really serious about it. They, they one they stop doing it but two they kind of respect you like i wish i could do that like yeah you, you know because you're not saying you don't like them you're not saying they're an ass you're not saying you know you're just saying like this thing i don't like mm -hmm. and often they go like later they'll say actually i don't like that either mm -hmm. you know yeah like I, I don't know why i was doing that you know it's like oh okay life's difficult right maybe they were raised where they, everybody made fun of them in their, their family yeah absolutely you know it was kind of like a standard thing to do right tease somebody in the family until they fucking right. yeah it's almost like that's how they show love 
is by teasing, right? That's how they show that they like you. Yeah, right, right, yeah. right, right, right. Guys totally do that. Yeah. That's what women do not fucking understand about guys, is they give each other shit when they like somebody. Yeah. Like if you don't like somebody, you basically say, oh, how are you doing, sir? Good morning, sir. You know, and then afterwards, that guy's a fucking prick, man, you know? He's a psycho. <laughs> you know? And then you call your friend, you go, he's such, you're such a fucking loser, look at you. You know, shave you dick, you know? So you smell like a fucking, you know, that's the way my dad is. Like him and his friends, that's all they do is insult each other. You know? Yeah, that's <laughs> it's, fun. It's like, I, I don't think that's the ultimate in life. I, I think that, you know, there's a point where you say, you know what, do I really want to be like this? Yeah, you know, I, but, I, th I think it's like finding where it becomes actually, where it doesn't come from a good place anymore, right? Where it's actually just trying to pull you down so that they can feel better about themselves, right? And I, I think there's a balance where you figure it out for yourself like what is actually good for you and what's not yeah and you you grow up and you change and then some things never change like i have some slang that i used to use as friends that were growing up like mm -hmm. surfing slang and whenever i see them i always use these words that we made up back when we were kids yeah that's so and funny. and they tried to stop me for a while but they finally gave in and realized that it's pretty fucking cool that we have our own language <laughs> like no one else understands these words like yeah. they're just words we made up and they're based on some person that we knew when we we're like eight you know you know, and so, yeah. but they're funny as hell, you know. Oh, they're fucking hilarious words. Like, once you're into the groove, you're like, oh my god, I, we laugh so hard we're together. But sometimes it's good to keep those things, and other times it's good to let them fucking go. Do you, do you guys, do, do you think, do you see yourself changing in the future? Like, kind of guys, like, right now I like to hang out with guys who are content creating, YouTube, people who improve their speaking, you know, like, a, yeah. not so much mathematics skills or whatever, you know. What kind of skills do you guys want to bring more into your life? That you haven't, you know, like you're thinking about what kind of people, you know, you'd like to be around. And like, what I, kind of I, skills are you learning it's now? It's super important. I, I want to continue to hang out with guys that are like positive. Like seeing how positive you are at your age makes me like, damn, I, it's, I feel like that's such a rarity. And I want to make sure that I'm also like positive, happy person when I get older. Um, Interesting. Positive. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I know a lot of people on the channel, they, 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 they listen because it's optimistic and positive. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, really. yeah, yeah. I think more dominant people too, like guys that are um, just, I guess, more authoritative. So I can sort of ingrain that in my personality as well. I feel like I'm slowly getting the now, and but I'm more aware of it now. Like le want, leader kind more. of guys. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So you're not going to be intimidated by them. You want to learn from them, right? Yeah, exactly. I think you also like... I di you, you diversify your friends in, in different areas in which you're... Um, in which you're interested, right? So you're gonna you're gonna have specific friends in content creation, but I might have friends as well that are right gonna be my close friends who I talk to about maybe relationships or, or something along those lines. Um, and then you know I'm not gonna talk about that with the people that I'm doing content with, but I'm gonna make sure I'm learning what I need to learn through editing and whatnot. And then you might have like your sales friends, and you, you get what I'm saying. And then the friends that you go out with, as soon as you diversify in that way, you can actually. Um, you're not you're not doing everything with them, but you're specifically gearing a, a specific part of you um, towards that group. I think that's why communities like build groups and whatnot, right? Right. To build it around like we're we have an interest in this, but maybe your other friends are like, oh, that's weird, right? So maybe your friends might be like, oh, dude, like editing and all that stuff, that's weird. I don't want to do that. But maybe they're really good to go out with. Right. So I keep right. them as people that Social I go out with, people. but I know yeah. I'm not going to come to you about this specific topic. Oh, but yeah. that doesn't mean that I'm just going to throw them out. It right. just means that right. I know that in this specific area, I like you as a friend. Right. Um, and so I'm going to keep you in that area, but nothing else. That, that, that's a really fucking wise thing, actually. I, I, what I, I have one friend, right? And all we do is watch musicals together. I see him once. I love musicals. He loves musicals. And we get together, we fucking watch musicals. I'll go to his house, spend the night, we'll watch musicals, you know? And talk about it, you know? And it's fucking awesome, you know? But there's not really that much else I want to do with the guy. You know what I mean? Like, that's it. I got another friend when I go home. And uh, Scott, he's my surfing friend. And, like, basically, he's so hardcore. He's like a Marine to boot camp. And he's been like that since he's, like, 10. Like, we get out. I get to his house. And he's, like, he's checking, like, 400 maps. The waves, the, the angles, this, that, this, that, and the wind. And then he's, like, we got to go now. This place here. Get your shit. You know, it's, like, it's cold. Like, I haven't eaten, you know. What are you talking about? Get your shit. Let's go. You know, he's like so hardcore about it, right? 
And it's like, like he doesn't do it if it's not meaningful. He like he knows where the surf is gonna be good. Uh -huh. And then he's like, fuck, let's go, let's go, like let fuck and let's go, like that's it. And it's like so good for me because like most people are like so easy going about surfing, but that's not how surfing is. Surfing is like black and white. If the waves are good or they're not, mm -hmm. you know. And the, and the hardcore guys, the guys who have balls, they fucking always go when it's good and they don't go when it's not good. You know, okay. they, they just, that runs their schedule, you know, uh, you know, it. it has to, otherwise you just, you're fake, basically, got it. you know, because you can't make the waves good, you know, yeah. they're either good or not, and it's like really hard to find, it's like really complicated, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> this guy's like, a, he's like a PhD in like waves, you know, <laughs> basically, uh -huh. you know, even though he's a total pot smoking dude, you know, he's fucking super pro at that, you know, and I, always it styles me out when i see him so like that i really agree with you like there's certain kind of friends like it's just like scott man when i'm home it's like me and scott man it's like you know what I mean? he's so cool about shit like lend me boards wetsuits he's got everything every fucking snap and yeah. water thing he's got like a water shower yeah. that you leave in the sun in the bag and then it warms up and you can take like a warm shower on the beach just with this bag of water that you carry down there you know yeah, he's got everything. Like it's like it's like, it's so easy to go with him, and yeah. he's totally stoked with someone like me. He's like just as hardcore. See, as he like is. that specific friend, like he's yeah. perfect to go to for that way. If I ever wanted to get into surfing, I'd be like, yeah, man, put me in touch with him. Like, right. It sounds like who's this perfect. fucking Scott guy? Yeah. But you would not go to him for sales. No, exactly. no, no, no. So no, you, no, so you no. have them like spin in different. No, or, or or social or like exactly social wise, but that doesn't mean you're gonna let him go. Yeah. yeah, no, no, no. He's exactly. like super valuable. Exactly, in that specific. I got another friend. He always like Chinese dinners. Like I speak Chinese, right? So like I love to go to Chinese dinners, and like I meet a lot of people, and it's like a unique thing. Like for me, it's like a totally different world. I'm speaking Chinese mm -hmm. with a group of Chinese that I don't know, and we're doing all the Chinese business dinner thing, you know. So he's awesome. He calls me up. He's like, dude, dinner. You know, we're going to Hacienda Heights. Boom. There's gonna be this many people. It's like yes, you know. It's not a Chinese meal, right? It's like a it's like a festival almost. You know what I mean? Like, and for me, I, I, my brain is like an overdrive, like full on Chinese. Eight guys talking at the same time. You know, it's like you know, it's a like great for my brain, right? Yeah. And then when I'm done, when I'm done with that, then then I need a break. You know, like yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that's how you you know you're saying like be positive, right? I'll tell you one thing, just to end on this, is being positive is not about being positive. Okay, it's not at all. It's not, it's not like, it, that, that doesn't even occur to me. What, what being positive is about is, is following shit that you like and that you're into and being honest with yourself and growing and stuff like that. That's the stuff that makes you positive. Like the idea of being positive, that's just, that's like putting paint over like moldy wall. You know, it doesn't yeah. work. You got to look at the things in your life and, and start, you know, mapping them out and, 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 and fixing your body and fixing your things and moving forward and doing all these things. And you will... It comes from the middle of your body. You will just naturally be positive. Yeah. And anytime you're not positive, what you do is you don't say, oh, I'm not positive. I'm not positive, you know? It's like, no, man, is that your body's telling you something. You got some problem, like something's going on. Something deep is going on. Like, otherwise I'm gonna be positive, right? So I'm like, wait, what is it? Oh, I'm so pissed off about this. And I, and I hadn't really realized it, you know? Yeah. So when you do get negative, it's a, there's a reason for it and, and it's telling you something important. Like when you have a cut and it hurts, right? You gotta clean it and put some medicine on it or it's gonna get worse, right? So if you are if you feel negative, don't be like, oh, I feel negative. It's like, oh, what's going on? Like, trust yourself and say, hey, what, what is going on right now that I don't feel positive? Like, And then you realize, you know, I've been letting this work build up and I've been kidding myself and there's like stacks of stuff and I'm hiding it. And it's like, yeah. that's why I don't feel positive. It's because of this work. It's like, okay. And then maybe, I, maybe I'm not ready to make a change yet, but at least I know now. And I, just that in itself, I start feeling more positive. Because then I can start kidding myself to my friends. I can say, oh, you know, I got a pile of work, but I'm too much of a pussy to do it, you know? Yeah. And then they're like, why is that? And they're like, I don't know, just pussy today. And then, like, I go home, I'm like, no, I'm not. Fuck this shit. Get this yeah. done, you know? Boom. Yeah. And so I, not necessarily, like, as soon as I see it, I, I make this big effort. I'll start making fun of myself. I'll start yeah. telling people. I'll start telling on myself, like, you know, like, oh, you know, now I'm eating. Like, for a while, I was eating half, half gallon ice cream every night. Wow, you know, damn. and like I'm in good shape, so you couldn't see it, right? Yeah. But the thing is, you get diabetes if you do that shit. Yeah. You know, so I told my brother, and he's like, "Dude, I had type two diabetes. He's skinny too. He's like, I got type two diabetes because of that." I'm like, "Oh man, you're right." You know, so it's okay every two days, <laughs> every three days. And now I got a new solution where I do this cocoa drink thing with no sugar, 
and it just pounds me with cocoa. So I found a solution by doing that, and that made me positive. Yeah. Yeah. Right? I can't just be positive if I'm eating half gallon ice cream yeah. that I don't want to eat, and I'm scared of diabetes because diabetes is scary as fuck, right? Yeah. It's like super scary disease, you know. Uh, yeah, I like that idea of positivity coming from your core and not it's not something like you just like put like an outer mask. It, it, it comes from real who things. You are, yeah. It, it comes the things from... that you're doing, yep. the things you're yep. passionate about. Yep making moves towards your future. I 100% agree with that. That's All right. So awesome. All right, cool guys. Garbage truck coming by, so we're gonna cut this one off. Here's the uh, styling garbage truck in Hollywood Hills. All right, Hollywood Hills garbage truck. Woo, yeah. All right. All right guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Catch you later.